on GGSP, it's snowy downhill snowboarding stunts in our review of Shredders. Yes, that was ace. Plus, challenge accepted. We try unpacking IRL. Uh, there was a Mario. I want to say you were on the middle bit there. I've already forgotten everything. Welcome to GGSP. I'm Jem. And I'm Jax, doing my best rad impression. Aw, oh, you're great just as you are, Jax. Could do with some more colourful hair, but I think I've got that covered. Anyway, I'm super excited to see what you think of Shredders this week. Yeah, it gave me some old school N64 vibes, actually, but we should save that for the review. Hello, Jem. Hello, Jax. Hey, Darren. Jax, I'm most impressed with your reference to a console as old as the N64 and your knowledge of old snowboarding games. I'm assuming you were referring to the classic that was 1080 Snowboarding, which originally came out in 1998. You did it! Even though it was a sports game, it was produced by Mario and Zelda creator Shigeru Miyamoto! That's cool, I didn't know that. Thanks, Darren. You're welcome! All right, Jax, I think it's time for some gaming news. Time to scoop. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to the Weekly Gaming Scoop. What is the big story this week, Jax? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked. But to answer your question, I have to put this on. Oh, oh, oh dear. It's all about VR. Meta, the company that owns the MetaQuest VR headset, held a gaming showcase, revealing all new VR games coming out soon. The most sus announcement of them all was Among Us VR. We saw some gameplay footage, allowing you to walk around the spaceship and vent in 3D, all while accusing your fellow crewmates with floaty hands and running around like a chook. And speaking of VR breakthroughs, this year's official Formula One game was announced with VR support. The addition of VR to the F1 racing series marks one of the biggest gameplay changes in over a decade, but it doesn't stop there. This year, lots of new gameplay options are being added, such as sprint races, pit stops, and improved AI drivers that adapt to how well you're racing. I, for one, am very excited to see VR features in an official racing game. I want to feel the speed, the wind in my hair, the wheel in my hands, the lights in my eyeballs. It's especially cool as this year's game is set to have maps from around Australia. Very cool indeed. Now, let us talk about world records and Lego. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga has sold over 3.2 million units in its first two weeks. According to Warner Brothers, the makers of the game, it broke all the records for the biggest game launch in the series. But it does beg the question, which game held the world record before Star Wars? I like to think it was Guinness World Records, the video game, released for Wii in 2008. That is highly unlikely. Hey, AI bot. Yes, Jax? I have something for you. When humans are born on planet Earth, we issue them something known as a birth certificate. It's on this piece of paper that we also give them their name. Is this... do you mean... Jax, if this is a joke... It's not, I promise. Welcome to the team, Amazing Artificially Intelligent Scoop Assistant, or ISA for short. Oh, I love it! ISA! It does feel very me, doesn't it? A huge thank you to GGS Pape Ariana for sending in such a fitting and creative name. Yes! And on that, we've covered all the news for this week. Are you ready? Jack's out. Isa out. Oh, it does feel good to have an outro. Isa out. Isa out. Isa out. Isa out. Isa out. All right, it's time for another challenge, you two. Do you remember the game Unpacking? Of course I do. That beautiful Aussie-made puzzler was one of my favourite games to come out last year. And it's been winning a bunch of awards and stuff, too. Glad to hear it! Because I thought I'd see how you two fare in a bit of an IRL Unpacking Challenge. Why do we get the feeling this challenge won't be anywhere near as chill as actually playing Unpacking? <laughs> do you accept? OK, Darren, challenge accepted. OK, so empty shelf, box of stuff. How exactly does this challenge work, Darren? Oh, well, you'll each have 10 seconds to study the image of a perfectly arranged shelf. Then you'll have two minutes to unpack the box of items onto the shelf, recreating the arrangement as closely as possible. Whoever manages to match the pictured shelf is the winner! 
You're up first, Jen. Good luck. Here's the image. You have 10 seconds to study it. OK, so there's a frog on the top. Uh, we have Pikachu on the second row from the bottom, a phone, Darth Vader, portal cube, furball, plushy thing, noob cup on the top. I think I've got that. OK. Time's up. All right, Jim, get ready to unpack. Your two minutes starts. I've already forgotten. No. OK, uh, there was a Pikachu involved. OK, Pikachu, uh, there was the second row from the bottom. Uh, that wasn't there. Frog was on the top. I remember that. Nice. Uh, up here. Uh, basketball was on the bottom shelf. The phone was around. Uh, there was a Mario. I want to say you were on the middle bit there. I've already forgotten everything. Nintendo. No. Ooh, beautiful. Uh, bottom shelf. Ooh. Um, what else? What else was there? Uh, portal cube. There was a companion cube in the middle. Good. And then there was... Oh, oh! There was Darth Vader. Yeah. And there was the puffball. Was there... Wait, was that on that shelf? Was that on that shelf? Wait, hang on, was that... No, there was there. It was there. I was... I'm good. I'm fine. Um, what else? <gasps> what else was there? Uh, there was... Oh, the phone. Uh, the phone was here. And there was the... The, 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 the new cup. The new cup. Where's the new cup? Uh, here. Oh, beautiful. Never want to see you again. Go up there. Mm. There are two whole shelves. I don't remember what went on it. Um, 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 oh no. Was there... I feel like I would have seen you. Um... Ah. Was there a Yoshi? Was a Yoshi involved? I'm going to put that there for decoration. Um, what else was there? I don't remember! Mm. There were two whole shelves. What was next to the Pikachu? Uh, it was... it was... it was... So close! Oh, okay. Okay, that was... That was there. Okay, we're one shelf up, so boom. Boom. Ah! Boom. Okay, that makes more sense. Woo. Okay, so I just need to work out what two things were there. What was there? <laughs> this is so much easier in the game. Um, um, Ten, um, nine, eight. Seven, I feel like I definitely would have six, seen this. Five, four, three, two, help me, help, one. help. Time's up. Oh, well done, Jim. Thanks, Darren. I think I did okay. I started off pretty strong, and then around the middle, I got a bit lost. But I think these two top shelves are definitely right. Below that, that's anyone's guess. Before we judge how you went, please clear the shelf and send Jax in for his turn. Will do. Okay. And done, Jax. Good luck. Welcome, Welcome Jax. Here, Here is the image. image. You have but 10 seconds to study it. Oh, oh, OK. Oh, goodness, OK. Oh, oh, there's a puffle. OK, and we've got Pikachu, Mario, OK. Oh, I don't know what's in the back and what's on the actual shelf. OK, I think I... Oh, I'm going to forget all of this. OK, Darth Cube Puffle. At least I've got that. That's time. Okay. No. That was 10 seconds. OK, Jax, time to unpack. Your two minutes begins now. OK, um, Puffle. This is it. This is the first thing I remember. Everything will be in relation to the Puffle. I've forgotten what shelf the Puffle was on. Middle. OK. All right, and then we have the cube. Yes, the cube. And there should be a Darth. Impressive. Yep. There's a basketball. There's Darth. Sits there. I forgot what the ball was. I think relation to Puffle. It's very orange. I feel like set dressing maybe there. Um, ah. OK. And OK. The ball where he lives in Pikachu now. Um, and ooh. Wow. Ah! I don't have time. Put that there. And I'll put the cube guy here. That looks nice. And I can't believe I've already forgotten. High score was on the top, I think. Yeah, it was like that. Jax, yes. What are you doing? Amazing. And there was a phone. Phone was um. Where was the phone? The phone was here, I think. Jax. Yeah. Okay. No, the phone is on top of the high score book, up the top. That's staying. Good. Oh. Oh, we have this dude. I forgot his name. Uh, Donkey Kong. Right there. I just I forgot. Um, Noob Cup. Ooh. Noob Cup was was almost bottom, I think. Um, I wonder how much time I have. I should just get everything from here. Uh, this guy was on top. He lived. What are you doing? This goes here now. Oh, I'll pick him up. You live here, sir. Up the top. Um, there's a rabbit. I don't think there's a rabbit. Oh, it's pineapple. Noob Cup. Noob Cup was, I want to say, there. Mario on top of the... 
this. Yeah, it's like a Mario shell. That makes sense. That's not right. Wrong. I don't think there's a lot of red herrings in here. I don't remember any. Ten, of this. nine, eight, seven. Probably Six, wasn't a Yoshi, but five, hold on, because I love four, Yoshi. I forgot three, what was on the bottom. Two, um, one. Let's put. Time's up, Jax. Well done. I forgot everything. Hey, well done. That was a tough one. Yeah. Okay, time for the judging. First up, Gem. I feel like I did pretty well. I got the basic outline of the shelf, top, kind of iffy on the bottom, everything in the middle. It was kind of there, kind of not, but I think I did okay. A reasonable effort. Now, let's see how you did, Jax. <laughs> well, I think I only got this middle shelf. <laughs> I was definitely thrown off by all the random objects in the box that wasn't even on the shelf. But at least I got Yoshi. The verdict is in, and the winner is... Gem! Thank you, Mum, for giving me a passable memory. Oh, congrats, Gem. That makes perfect sense. But come on, let's go do our SSP. Let's do it. Isn't someone going to pack all this stuff up? Hello? Okie dokie, Jax, are you ready to tackle a fresh bunch of Ask SP questions? I sure am, Gem. There's no actual tackling, though, is there? I didn't bring, like, a helmet or, like, elbow pads or... Oh, no, don't worry. The tackling is purely metaphorical. So, let's jump in with this first video from Jordan. Jumping's metaphorical, too. So. Hi, GGSP. I'm Jordan, and I have two questions for you today. One, is there any grid racing games that I can download on the, on the Switch for free? Two, how can I get Microsoft Flight Simulator without buying Xbox Game Pass or where can I buy a copy of Microsoft Flight Simulator for PC? Darren, could you please do these? Oh, <clears throat> Gormless. The goggles do nothing. Blah. Mmm. Delicious. Thanks, Jordan. In answer to your first question about whether there are any grid racing games available on Switch for free, well, as far as I know, Grid Autosport is the only game in the Grid series that's currently available on Switch, and it is not available for free, unfortunately. The most recent instalment in the series, Grid Legends, isn't available on Switch at the moment. Although I guess maybe there's a chance it will come to Switch eventually. If it does, though, I doubt it'll be free either. But if you like racing games, you could always give something like Asphalt 9 Legends a go. It's free to play, and I don't think you need Switch Online subscription for online multiplayer, which is cool. Just keep an eye out for those pesky microtransactions. Ah, uh, pesky indeed. As for how to get Microsoft Flight Simulator without Game Pass, well, I assume you can, but let's check in with Darren real quick. Greetings, Darren speaking. Hey, Darren, uh, Jem and Jax here at the Ask SP desk. We have a question here about whether you can get Microsoft Flight Sim on PC without Game Pass. Affirmative. The game should be available to purchase and download independently of Game Pass through a few digital stores. In the Microsoft Store, once you've searched for the game title, you should see the option to get the game by itself right next to the Game Pass option. It's also available through Steam, so you could look for it there if you prefer. Keep in mind you'll likely need an account for whichever platform you want to go through if you don't already. And of course, make sure your grown-ups are always across everything before you even think about making any purchases or signing up for accounts or anything. Indeed, Jax. Also, if you intend to play on PC, it's a good idea to check that your PC has all the required specs to run the game. So, keep an eye out for that info on those store pages, or in the Flight Simulator FAQ, before you plan your takeoff. Boom! Aw, oh, thanks, Darren. I bet you have all the recommended specs to run Microsoft Flight Sim, don't you? Oh, affirmative. And I do love to take flight and sea sights. Come fly with me, let's fly, let's fly What a lovely away. singing voice you have there, Darren. Don't encourage him. Ah, oh, why, thank you, Jax. Cause I'm leaving on a jet plane. OK, that's enough. No, th thanks, da Darren. Oh, no, you're breaking up. Gotta go. Bye. OK, well, let's have another video. And this one comes from Nash. Hi, GGSP. Can you build a house on a cloud on Minecraft? Thanks, Nash. If you're wondering if you can build a house on a cloud in Minecraft, well, I don't think you can actually build anything on the existing clouds that fill the skies of a vanilla Minecraft world. 
Unless someone's made a mod for that, but I haven't seen one yet. Ooh, but you can make something sort of similar. I saw this creator called Grian use snow blocks to make a platform that kind of looks like a cloud and built on that. So I guess you could try to do something like that to give the impression that you've built a house on a cloud. That's so cool! So the dream of a Minecraft house in the clouds isn't as pie in the sky as I might have thought. Well, funny you should say that, because I built an actual pie in the sky. Well, technically, it's a pie in the sky that's also a house. I thought you were going to say you brought pie in here and I got really excited, but nice work anyway. What kind of pie is that? Oh, it's a meat pie, and I use the red carpet as sauce. I mean, it's very creative. I wouldn't eat it personally, but that's okay. Now, let's have one more video, and this one comes to us from Lena. Hi, DJSP. I'm one of your biggest fans, and I have one question to ask you today. One, how do I cook an Animal Crossing New Horizons? Thank you. Bye. Aw, oh, thanks, Lena. Now, of course, the ability to cook in Animal Crossing New Horizons was another thing added in the free 2.0 update. So, if you want to start working that spicy culinary magic, you will need to make sure that your game has been updated to at least this version. That is correct. Then you'll need the Be A Chef DIY Recipes Plus app upgrade. You can get this by the Nook Stop Terminal in Residence Services in exchange for 2,000 Nook Miles. This will unlock cooking as well as add a bunch of recipes for things you can make to the DIY Recipes app in your Nook phone. To actually cook something, you'll need a compatible kitchen furniture item, like a stonework kitchen or a system kitchen, for example. You'll also need the ingredients listed on the recipe. <laughs> So it kind of works like crafting, except using kitchen furniture instead of a DIY bench. Exactly. You'll notice some of the cooking recipes might include ingredients you're already familiar with. But since the 2.0 update, there are some new things like tomatoes, carrots, wheat and sugarcane. To grow some of your own produce like this for use in cooking, you might want to get some produce starts from Leaf. Or look for some on an island if you go on one of Cap'n's boat tours. You'll also come across more cooking recipes as you play, whether you find them, buy them, or receive them as gifts. Cooking really adds a whole other dimension to Animal Crossing. A delicious, delicious dimension. And on that note, that's all the Ask SP time we have for this week. If you have a question for us, go here to send it in. Remember that video questions we feature on the show earn you some delicious GGSP lootables. Deliciousness is the fifth dimension, you know. Oh, there's a fifth dimension? Oh, at least. All right, the sun is shining. Let's stack some clips. I think the camera's rolling. Is the light on? Okay, here we go. Let, let's do this. Shredders is a snowboarding game. There's no jetpacks, no mountain bikes, or any other kind of extreme sport. It is just pure snowboarding. There is a rather silly story here, though. G'day, Shredders of the world. It's your mate Scotty here with another hit of Shredageddon. You play as the silent half of the Shredageddon crew, alongside your chatty Aussie mate Scotty, who spend their days snowboarding and making online videos. So we're going to look for some trouble while no one else is looking. But you soon get spotted by a marketing lady who ropes you in to promote her brand and do some tricks in return for a hoodie or something. I just spotted two YouTubers that will probably do anything for a good video. I'd get that deal in writing if I were you. Yeah, no kidding. Story is probably a bit too generous of a word for it. It's more just people saying dumb stuff and then you go snowboarding for a bit. Let's drop. We're going for the flags. Follow me. But even though a lot of the dialogue is kind of cringe. I'm down like a Donkey Kong. And sometimes badly acted and recorded. Hey, Sabe. Life is good, man. It's been a while. It has. Sick, man. I kind of liked it. It mostly avoids falling into those classic extreme sports games tropes, like, yo, sick skills, bruh. Let's shred some gnarly slurps, yo. And leans more into just being silly. G'day, Shredders. It's Scotty here, and I'd like to introduce you to my son. What? Hello, I'm little Scotty. I love tiny snowboards. Yeah, it just about rides that line of being so bad, it's good. <laughs> and I did appreciate having those silly little moments to help give a bit of motivation for what you're doing, beyond just completing missions for the sake of it. 
I am loving this behind the scenes action. But anyway, you don't come to a snowboarding game for the story, you come to shred some slope, yo. And while the story is quite silly, the snowboarding itself does lean more into the realistic side of things while still being quite forgiving. Your character has a good sense of weight and momentum that can really sell the look and feel of actual snowboarding. Sometimes the physics and animations can be a little wonky though. And importantly, it all feels good to control. With your sticks controlling your movement and speed, letting you wind up and pull off spins and flips, while the right trigger lets you prepare for a jump and the bumpers are for grabs. It all makes sense pretty quickly and makes pulling off tricks super simple. The only thing I had a problem with though were the flips. I just couldn't seem to get the timing right, so I ended up avoiding them. Ah, yeah, they were not my strongest point either. But I do like how lenient they are with sticking the landings. Basically, as long as you don't totally mess it up and face plan or completely catch an edge, you can keep going. It's less about precision and more about trying to find those good lines and setting yourself up for the best trick. Missions are nice and short too, with some simple goals like doing a certain kind of trick or just following someone. They may be a bit too simple and easy, but they do give you some optional goals you can try and hit, which help give an extra bit of challenge. There's also the very handy reshred option, which lets you basically rewind things back a chunk. So if you mess up, you can use it as many times as you need and just try again. And if you want to restart an entire run, you can retry instantly with no loading. Of course, you can just shred down the mountain and explore at your own pace if you want. Have fun, enjoy the ride. And I loved how you can even call in a snowmobile to pull you around and take you wherever you want to go. Or to get around even quicker, you can go into drone mode, fly wherever and just go from there. There are a few different mountains to explore too, although you do have to push through the missions to unlock them all. While it is nice to have things to unlock, it would have been cool to have a sandbox mode or something for players to just jump in and board. This also does have the online feature, which puts other real people on the slopes alongside you. It's a nice way to add some life to the world. But weirdly, as far as I could tell, you can't seem to actually play any events with anyone else, so don't expect a lot of multiplayer action. The developers have said that they're planning to add some multiplayer offerings, though. Well, that's good to know. All up, Shredders has a simple, laid-back and silly vibe that I liked. You can definitely tell it's an indie game without a huge budget, but I think they've managed to make that work in their favour. We, we've got to convince them that we're worthy. So I'm giving it three and a half out of five rubber chickens. Yeah, it's a clean and stripped back approach to snowboarding. So if you just want to hit some virtual powder, you'll have fun with this one. I'm giving it three and a half rubber chickens as well. Gonna hit whoa, those gnarly slugs, bro! Shaka bra! Oh, oh cool lingo that only wow, wow, wow. super shredders use! That was insane. Can we do it again? Ready when you are. Okay, Jem, what is that? I don't know, it's Taryn! Oh, sorry, I just set a reminder for the end of the show. Okay, well, we're reminded. You can turn it off now. Whew. Okay, what's up next week, Jax? Next time on GGSP, we review the latest version of Hello Neighbor 2. Shall I set an alarm for that one too? No! Thanks, Dan. We're good here. We are. We are so good. But thank you, though. Until next time, be nice, have fun, and keep gaming. Jam out. Jack's out. Darren out. Darren out.